so uh, what we have is the voice in the wasteland and the uh, forgotten words of, of John the Baptist, Yogenon, uh, the Avavatezer would be the right way to uh, more correctly say it back then. And hey, Teresa, good to have you. And welcome, welcome uh, to our broadcast tonight. You're just in time. You're about to hear a, a very uh, significant read of a lost writing, uh, the words of Yalganun, um, and uh, he's got others. This is not the only one, but this is. I did this uh, actually 20 years ago, and I've been sitting on it the whole time. I, in my ministry, we've been trying to uh, find uh, support and backup, you know, to raise funds to to start publishing these works. And it's been the hard hardest thing to uh, to do this on a um, a full time you know, volunteer basis and not have a regular, you know, not have a regular job. If I had the regular job, I couldn't do all this reading and translating and producing broadcasts uh, like I was doing on the internet. So, um, so, and thank you, uh, Shelly. Yeah, they can uh, make a, a donation to the translation project. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, to support it once a month, uh, you know, $5 a month would make a big difference. You know, uh, uh, if people uh, came on board and supported it, we, we'd be making history, being a part of history, you know. Uh, so I'll read this, and um, and uh, love to hear your your feedback, and hope you hope you'll be inspired as well. And it's real history. What what is evident in this document is the is the history. Okay, it's going to tell us about the destruction of your of Yerushalayim, Shalom, Jerusalem, in seventy A.D. sixty eight to seventy A.D. Okay, by Flavius uh, Ves, uh, Vespasian. And uh, Titus Vespasian, and uh, and um, and they uh, they were you know they, they both became emperors of Rome at one point, but it's about the destruction of uh, Yerushalayim, okay, as well as um, the the coming that that was happening. In other words, when uh, Yalganun was saying the uh, you know the um, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, well. At hand is is like one of those codes again because it's in hand, or in other words, it's just saying the the kingdom of heaven is here, it's now. And then what did Yeshua say, you know, to his followers? He said, "Hey, the harvest is great. For, create light to the Father of the harvest that He will bring us more workers." So they're already harvesting, you know, into the kingdom. Okay, it's royal domain, royal dominion, but uh, kingdom uh, is okay uh, for now. So, um, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I'm glad you're tuned in. As written by, uh, or, or um, his, as written, the speech as written by his disciple, his truth seeker, Yolganun, the evangelist. And we start out with the declaration of Yolganun. Give me your sorrowful ear, all of you high-minded nations of Asia and Europe. Hear the limitless and foretelling cries of truth from the tree's root that I am now pouring out of my mouth. Like the dark honey from a great jar, I do not mix these achavors, these words of truth, with the false light of the woman's cult, who men have falsely called their mother light. Who is the blind guide, the moon of the night? But it is of the great light that I speak, whom the hands of man cannot form into any idol of carved stone, that which has no voice. Since he has not established his dwelling in any stone idol found standing in temples which are powerless to speak or move with an emptiness that has now become the downfall of man. His singular nature is that which no one can see from this earth, nor comprehend with earthly eyes alone, since he was not formed by the hands of man. With an all-encompassing view, he sees everything and everyone, and yet, no Ashan, no man can see him. He is the great dark night and the brightness of the day at high noon. He is found in the many stars and within the, the moon and in the, the sea with all of its unlimited variety of creatures. He is in the land 
within the rivers. He is the source for the never ending streams and springs. He establishes all of the natural creatures for um, perpetuating life and the rain that causes the fields of grain to, to grow. Along with the fruitful trees, the grapevine and the olive oil. He is the one who drives the reins of my heart from within to now spell out in full detail everything that has happened to mankind and all of the things that are soon to occur beginning from the very first generation to this last. He alone will direct and re reprove everything and that by bringing his judgment to pass, uh, to come past the earth, excuse me. Let me try it again. And by bringing his judgment of focusing light to come past the earth. So friends, you must see and read it for yourself. As he pour, as he, as uh, and understanding everything, comprehending everything from this voice in the desert, as he pours out the echoes of the true Eshavors, the swords of fire, the words of a logo, from a pure mouth with sweet lips. Baruch endowed and enlightened and separated, will be the Eshan, the men upon this earth star who will some sincerely love the great light of our Ava Fethor, Father, Yahweh, the one who comes within the throne of the sun by acknowledging him always such as before eating or drinking, by being absolutely perfect in purity, also by rejecting the man-made temple structures of false images and idol worship all with their high altars that are all built up upon a useless foundation of endless stones and that are all defiled by the never-ending blood of living creatures, the four-footed beast, man uh, made perfect, but only for blood sacrifices. So while at the same time you look for the great light of Yahweh, the one who comes with the throne of the sun, it must be by not hating or killing other men, not trading in commerce for gain by deceit, since all of these are the evidence of total blindness and a lack of vision, nor can you possess any unnatural desire for another's wife, nor can it be with the destructive and abhorrent intercourse between men whose thoughts in imperfections and perverted customs perfect men would never emulate lower men whose desires are all aimed towards the shameless behavior all being contrary by nature they still revel in in this with their arrogant laughter and singing being immature and deviant in their thinking they will then falsely accuse others of the very things that they themselves do and are guilty of acting out. The entire race of man is blind in its vision, being without any inward adherence or conviction. So now the judgment of the ten in the focusing light and the end of this world has now come. The end of the world has now come 2,000 years ago. And the Avahe, the one who comes with the throne of the sun, has now claimed it. He has accomplished it, his by being seated as the judge of focusing light and domesman of all of the pure and of the impure, using his one same and equal balance. He is now throwing out and casting down all of the impure, down into Gehenna, in the stinking garbage heap, into their self-made fire of their own destruction, within this valley of the outer darkness, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, 
But when they are all shut out of the light, this is when they will completely comprehend the terrible nature of their own self-willed behavior and thoughts. Yet the pure, they will remain standing on their own perfect earth within the great father's very own fruitful garden of light, the Ganun. The time has now come when Yavoheh, the one who comes with the throne of the sun, is giving out of his own the pure way in the great breath of the wind and fire in his own perfection. All of these things are now going to be accomplished in his, this final generation. 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> I will now reveal the things that I have come that have come to pass. Beginning with the first generation, the fallen Aryans were the first people to enforce their bitter rule over all of mankind. Maintaining the known world at that time under its power of priestly control and it has been this way for the first six great periods of man. 6,000 years till the end of the world. From the beginning of, Ari of Arian, the fall, when Yahweh, the one who comes with the throne of the sun, became angry with the first Kanuk, the Kanuk in the city of darkness, and with all the Ashan. This was the age when the great Atlantic Sea was released, when the earth split apart, the, the continents of Europa and Africa split apart, and the waters all rushed in, the sea in the middle of the land. And then this is when the next middle period came, the second age, a new star, the Nova, incorrectly called Noah, the Nova, the new star. But man, Ashan, one more time, subdued all the earth, with every man, each exacting their own throne. Yet this great epic was only the second of three ages that were to come. And in this great end of time, the golden age of light, you will see these great signs occur when the blackness of the night will appear in the middle of the day. This is when the message in the stars then will then be finished and the sun with the moon's light of fire will suddenly be pierced, dripping with blood. And the ground, it will shake and rumble with the force of a tremendous earthquaking while bringing down, crashing to the ground a great number of cities with their opulent works by man. This will then be the time when the many new islands of a pure race will appear from the deep of this great and bitter sea of mankind. So it is here, the great judgment of focusing light of the Euphrates has now come and it will flood the entire world within its own pure blood. Then those in darkness who are caught between the middle and the end will raise their cry for war against the peace that comes and terrible wars will occur because those who will be caught in the middle will then be dominated by the true sovereign, the seed of light. So they will then cross over the great sea in the middle of the land as a roaring lion attacking its prey. Since the seed of light will be supreme by their perfect light nature, having the dominion over all in the world, the true sovereigns. Yet they will have only one natural generation within the view of man. In order to grow and to first establish their non-ending rule, then all of the, the torments that men pray to be spared from will come to pass, war, murder, divisions, and people fleeing into foreign exile with the overthrow of rulers and nations, the burning of cities. At a time when the 
ever-consuming grave will find its own way to the center of the earth. Yarul Eshalam, Jerusalem. And all of this then bringing the full and complete judgment, the focusing light of retribution coming down fully upon Yarul Eshalam and upon the entire world at large. This is when Yuta, Judah, the land that flows with pure wheat, will soon experience the failure of its own seasoned harvest that for a period of 40 years more strong. A period when the Jordan, the Jordan, her lifeblood which nourishes the seed of pure wheat will all but dry up, thus hiding its very dark waters somewhere else beneath the earth. But it is now that out of the east from the sun has come a great ruler brandishing a two-edged sword supported by perfect vessels without any number as he walks the cleared, uh, the pure, uh, uh, as he walks with the pure purpose, cleared path of light in this bitter sea of darkness while he, he with tears, this, uh, while he tears this high and exalted Judean mountain down, he makes his own presence known. Then his haven in the east in the sun will receive him back, the great light, from his victory of light over the war of death. This is now the golden age when the earth will be destroyed by the fire of judgment, focusing light from one end of the earth to the other, and all by a fiery stream of blood that will flow from out of this center of this fiery mountain's heart. Yes, this is the golden age when Eshareul, Israel's great city, will fall within its own flowing river of blood. The grave will receive a great number due to this judgment of focusing light Men with no conviction or victory of light will rage the one upon the other. They will then go into every city seeking the only loved pure seed who they will then attack, cut down, and slay. All in a great spiritual battle, even though the war will be of an undefined nature by those who perse persecute it. So it is now that the entire race of Ashan, man has come to meet this interminable end all within this last and final generation 2,000 years ago. At a time when all of the people of the world are greatly pressed down under the torments under, and under the yoke of a totally blind slavery. But this is the new dawn and the great sun rising when the pure seed of light will all hold a royal scepter within each of their own hands. But within this final golden age of a new Yaru Shalom, new Jerusalem, as the old Jerusalem will be surrounded, captured and destroyed by fire. <coughs> yes, the Romans will totally destroy Yarul Shalom and her people, they will all perish and they will all be a people no more. Their seed will then be spread out and dissolved throughout the entire world where it will no longer be seen by men. It is from this time forward then that the lost people of this dead earth will no longer be regarded by the one who comes with the throne of the sun and all of the affairs of the lost nations of this world in the age that has now come will be without foundation babylon uh, or recognition babylon jerusalem babylon jerusalem who is great in majesty and beauty and prominence is now no longer recognized in the battle for light she will be left broken, built upon a useless foundation. The seed of golden light will obtain their sovereign dominion in the new earth, 
while the dead of this lower world, the followers of Adonai, the adversary, the false accuser, will all run away and hide, each within their own serpent flesh of graven death. The end of time has now come 2,000 years ago because that river of pure golden sunshine is now flowing down and rising upon you, just breaking out with its pure rays of the new dawn of pure light out there, just over the horizon it is, rising up upon this once pure and separated land. But for you, the seed of the moon, the, the blind goddess El, from your Babylonian Talmud, you have fallen down to the lowest bottom, along with your mother, the queen of the night. So once you feel this earth begin shaking great beneath your feet, and you see this great city begin to crumble, this is when the final judgment of focusing light of the ten has come. And they were told to flee to the mountains before the gates closed. And it is for all of the people of the world that this perfect creation will be finished. Yet this zenith of perfect strength of the great light will not remain uh, in, uh, in clear view, will not forever remain in clear view because from out of the West, a great Latin persecution will soon spring up which will then subdue all of the entire world. And the entire world will then be captured as a slave in bondage, pressed down under the black boot of Italy. And it will be you, the ill-fated false Moeshiach, the false Messiah, not Antichrist, because that word is a modern creation. It is the false Moeshiach, the false Messiah, who will one day be gazed upon by her own slavery, her mortal slavery not immortal freedom. Yes, Rome, your twin towers will also bend its knees down to the earth. You who are the treacherous, the Nicolaitans of deception, an earthquake is quietly awaiting as well one day to destroy you. Let me... Um, one day to destroy you. Hang on. And legal attends to destroy you as well. And and it will bring you to a complete ruin. Even though you're you you will be found again as a city that still stands. The beautiful light of the moon reflecting darkness, your shaky ground will no longer support you and your secret craft. It will be brought down, down from your head to the earth. You will be, you will soon enough be desperate to hide yourself, unable to keep yourself alive as an exile who remains within a foreign land. What time covers up by the impurities of, of the woman, the great whore, they will be spread out like a vast and dark sea wave with all of her false judgments found within her complete corruption for the power of Lucifer moon, the light of the fire, the distress of eternal slavery is well in store for you. So for the light of wisdom and for Babylon, Jerusalem, the final blast of her blindness will all soon come, all in the form of war down from Italia. They will come laying siege and rendering her in ruins and all of that great temple which was the mother father's door. This is when they will put all of their trust into a rebellion while they cast off their own tradition of piety as if to the four winds because they will have committed the most contempt, uh, contemptible of murders, even in front of the temple of light. And this will be 
near the time when a great ruler from Italia will run away just like a fugitive slave. Can you say Nero? He will flee in the night, unseen and unheard, while running ahead before his own judgment and plight. Because even he will have committed the most abhorrent abortion of a mother's baby, Nero's sister, his sister wife, and with many other things beyond this, excelling beyond all of the greatest extremes by his wicked hands. When he runs away from that woman's land, yes, the grounds of Yarule Shalom will be stained with blood from vast numbers untold as never before and all for the glory of and the throne of Rome. Then another leader will come to Esherayul, Israel, and he will with fire burn her to the ground, that sacred temple of Shalomun. A million men more will be slaughtered, will all be piled up in the valley of the great garbage heap, Gehenna. This is how the once great nation of Esherayul will meet her final end and for all of her unending ways of corruption. This is when the great earthquake of mystery will cover the light of truth and knowledge all together. When the deep dark waters with its violent serpent storm will cover the sun of truth by its many dark waves of blasphemy. But when the royal flaming sword of fire and the focusing light of pure judgment who came to earth from within a deep cave and a virgin in the land of Utah and will again return up to the great throne of the Son of Light. This is when he will burn with his breath of fire all of the earth, bringing to a close with a final end for all of natural man. Mortal, because mortal means death. This is when the clouds, as black as ashes, will hide the great light and blood will drip down from the sky like rain. Or in 2nd Esdras, it says, the wood bleeds. This is when you will see the great judgment of Yahweh, the one who comes with the throne of the sun. This is when the world they will seek to destroy this new and purified seed of men made perfect. And this is when in the West they will be found a great war of persecution being waged against all of the sovereign exiles having escaped the destruction of Yarule Shalom who will be carrying with them a very powerful sword of light and truth from the tree's root all having gone through the great judgment and passed into that golden age of light with the many thousands of thousands. Those ill-fated haters of knowledge will never allow you to have a city to call your own. While in their imperfections and blindnesses, they hand you over to the Latin spear. So, Yeru Eshalom, she will be consumed by starvation and disease and plunder, all due from the frightful sounds of that war. The focusing light of judgment has come for you, Yarul Shalom. The vast and broad dark wave of a nation's sea. And this wave, it will soon hide you forever. As you are tossed out on your carcass, your carcasses, in your own winter's blast. Then back to the sun will return all of the great wealth of a great harvest at the end of the world. That Yarul Eshalom had once laid claim since she coveted everything for herself, all of the wealth and the knowledge and hiding everything within her own treasure house of gold. 
she that now more so so that now more than a double portion will she be obligated to restore and give it back to the throne of the sun since in this war is determined the place where you will meet your end along with all of the seas along with all of the the, the seas of the nations of the dead those who dwell in it the world of a bitter sea that's dead those beautiful protective walls they are all so tall and strong yet you will all be destroyed by an inner bitter famine of great emptiness when this bitter sea buries you beneath your own black waters this is when the knowledge in the all conviction in the all perfection of man of a shan and in the purity that is total it will be hidden from the face of man within the great mystery for all of the light of the truth will become hidden within a secret part and place of this world for men would much rather prefer to be complete reprobates by following in all of the impure activities of the world as they will all allow for the performance of every shameful act acts that are totally despicable and blind and it will be as if no man will wa wish to take upon himself the knowledge the true knowledge of the perfect the upright and the pure so that in their emptiness and simplicity the proud blind will attempt to destroy every true follower of the way of light finding only pleasure and fulfillment in their every violent act while they constantly direct their crooked hands to work of the work of shedding blood perpetual war maybe you can be sure that Yavohe, the one who comes with the throne of the sun has no more pity for them because now through the burning fire of his one great light he will completely destroy in his one final act of a resurrection and of a coming back because when he rose from the dead he came back the entire race and seed of the moon when he says it is finished and entered back into his one great judgment of focusing light with all power oh you dead jars of clay and ash do not let these coming events fall down upon you now do not compel our great light Yahweh, hey, the one who comes with the throne of the sun into many judgments of focusing light of retribution fall against you so now abandon all of your 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 acts of senseless violence your constant use of flaming swords of vain words and you're threatening to kill another man it is now the time to make your whole body the temple of and the spirit clean within this ever running river of flowing light in the true life then by reaching out your hands before our great light above looking for forgiveness from all of your former misdeeds and then within a pure homage of communication and thanks seek for pardon for your empty life of impurity so that our great light yavel hey the one who comes with the throne of the sun will grant you a complete and everlasting pardon then he will quickly raise you up from this death and he will hold back his great invisible fire all that at once if you will only fulfill his will by following the sacredness of purity from deep within the center of your own heart and mind but if you choose to keep your blind eye and not look at these things and follow my example but instead find pleasure in your imperfection then you 
who have received all of these eshavors, these burning swords of fire in words, with ears that are filled with the wax of the bee, so that you cannot hear, you must know that a great fire has now come down upon this entire world as evidence through the many great signs, all through the royal flaming sword of judgment and fire that points the way in every direction. Since the, the ram's horn has now been sounded, the shulfar for this perfect and greatest of sunrises, the final golden age of light, sunrise, and the entire world can now hear the vibrations of that ram's horn's mighty blast. He is now prepared to burn with fire the entire world and to bury and to destroy the entire dead seed of the moon, the sea of mankind, within every city, town, and village, within every river, stream, and ocean. He will destroy everything by an invisible fire that never stops burning and the outer darkness of the dead earth is all that you will ever see. So in this end, when everything will have been completely reduced into the dust of a star of ashes, this is when Yahweh, the one who comes within the throne of the sun, this very great fire in the very same way that he started it, for Yahweh, the one who comes with the throne of the sun with his own hands, has come to form a new and sovereign state within man, made perpetual, made of perpetual star fire. Yes, he is even now raising up his own complete and perfect images once again, just as they were intended from the beginning. So now it is true. The great judgment of focusing light has come, and Yahweh, the one who comes with the throne of the sun, will render his verdict and sentence by dismissing outright the entire world and all and for all time, so that all of those who are found at fault and commit the endless deeds of impurity will be buried beneath an invisible sea of judgment focusing light and doom, as it was even with the first flood, deep within an outer darkness, separated from the light, while it continually burns them in the endless valley of Gehenna, the garbage heap. But all of those who are pure, they will rise up in the age of the second born and maintain their dominion upon the earth inheriting all of the natural and their supernatural wealth that belongs to Yahweh, the one who comes within the throne of the sun. In the golden age of light, when Yahweh, the one who comes within the throne of the sun, gives out of his pure eternal breath of wind and fire, all though through his own perfection, but only to those who are pure in heart since they will see all things clearly as they really are through the inner eye of pure light, comprehending clearly all of the hidden meanings and signs in the beautiful and ecstatic light of the sun's creation. The Aishan, man who lives to see these things, will find himself within the third and final golden age of favor and enlightenment, a day without end in the great light. And let there be light, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you, uh, Shelly. Let's go to a musical break and then we, I can do a commentary on that real uh, quick, okay, before we, we close out. And if anybody has any questions, that's the time to come on. So uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 